I'd like to continue over the holidays to do these series of videos that I call the Solution Series, about steps that we ought to take in public policy that will really solve a lot of America's basic problems. American schools, public schools, are terrible. Uh, in international competitions, we see how bad they are. And while American voters agree overwhelmingly that our school system is bad, they also agree overwhelmingly that their child's education is just terrific. <laughs> and uh, this level of self-deceit and of uh, mythologizing uh, is continuing and is really undermining our school system. Now with Republican Congresses and Republican Donald Trump and Republican Secretary of Education Betty DeVos, we have a real opportunity to change this. The fundamental issue is not class size, it's not resources, it's not uh, any of these computers, any of this stuff. The issue is competition. Why do we take the things we don't care about, like underarm deodorant and toothpaste, and have vigorous competition over that, and permit anyone to buy whatever car they want, whatever house they want, whatever refrigerator or washing machine they want, but to go to the school, the most important decision you can possibly make for the benefit of your family and your children, we don't permit people to do that. They have to go to the public school that's within their zip code. And since we have never mastered the problem of discrimination in housing, and ghettoization of housing has continued apace in the United States, continuation of this policy effectively overrules Brown v. Board of Education and reimposes the separate but equal doctrine of, of Plessy v. Ferguson. It's outrageous because if your housing is discriminated and your schools are based on housing, the schools will be segregated. Unless you resort to crazy expedients like busing and all kinds of stuff like that that we know doesn't work. The steps that are necessary are very clear. Number one, any child should be able to go to any public school within his taxing jurisdiction. Secondly, every child that wishes to, whose parents wish him to, wish to go outside of the public school system into charter, private, church, or parochial schools should be allowed to do that. And the state and federal share of, his, of the budget that pays for that school should attach to the child and go with him or her to the new school. Indiana has now implemented this on a statewide basis. And in a few years, it'll be uh, in all of the state. It's now in much of the state. So that the uh, average student in Indiana gets about, is cost about 12000 a year for tuition. And about a seven or 8000 of that is the state share. And if the parents want to take their child out of a public school and send them to any other school that's, that's accredited, uh, the state seven or 8000 will follow the child and, um, and go to the school that he elects to attend. Ultimately, what happens to the other schools? Well, they become empty. They fall apart because they're not any damn good. You know, a while ago I was giving a speech in Orlando for school choice, and a teacher's union person was heckling me and yelled out, which of our public schools do you plan to close? And I yelled back, the empty ones. And that's the point. You let parents make the selection, you let them vote with their feet. In the city of Philadelphia, you have about 200,000 students in public schools, and you have about 60,000 in charter schools, not private or parochial, but charter. And uh, there's a waiting list of 30,000 more students that want to transfer into the charter school system. Now, the liberals are always trying to pretend that this is a state and local issue, and it's about time we overcame that. The U.S. Department of Education should issue a regulation saying that any jurisdiction that does not provide for free choice with public education and file a plan for a voucher system to send children to private or church schools if their parents wish it will no longer receive federal aid, period. Force it on the states. Make us create a competitive environment. Why are America's colleges so good, even state universities? And high schools so bad? Because colleges draw across state lines. 
People go to all kinds of different schools and every school is competing with every other school for entrance and for good people. Um, with high schools, there's no competition. You just go to the school that you're sent to. And what do you do with teachers that are uh, consistently underperforming? You fire them. You change the teacher tenure law to get rid of them. Uh, you don't permit teachers to hang on. You decide that fundamentally what we're going to do is run the schools for the benefit of the students, not for the benefit of the teachers and the unions. This is a unique opportunity, and God, I hope we seize it. Thanks for watching.